All right guys, today's project is going to be another one of those annoying but really cool ones. Today we're going to be working on this floor indicator. So it's kind of like the US digital indicator, but this thing is a whole lot different. And I'll show you why. So the US indicator was an actual LED indicator, it was a seven segment display. Now this is a seven segment display as well, but it's actually an LCD type display, which is really cool. So this actually came off of a Schindler Hot and Elevator, and this was given to me by Sam. So Sam, huge thank you for this panel. So the actual front of the panel, it's actually quite large. We have, this came from car two. The actual indicator part is very small. But here on the back, we've got the circuit board. It's pretty complicated. You see here, we got 24 pins here, and we've got six pins here. And with the right combination and the right voltage, we can make stuff happen. The idea for this project, we're going to use this circuit board here, this Arduino. I've got some stuff on it already for testing, but we're going to use this board here to run this board. So before we get started with any of the wiring and any of that fun stuff, let's just do some work on the actual panel. I'll do the cleaning of the panel in the end because I can see me handling this thing a lot and get the fingerprints off but I do want to focus a little bit on the actual screen I feel like it's gonna be pretty dirty so let's go ahead and take off the circuit board and that's done pretty simply just taking these nuts off and the board comes off like that and this reveals the little screen and the reason I pulled this thing off is I want to see how dusty it is. yep and it is definitely dusty and just wipe the screen off here get the dust off kind of like that so now we've got a much cleaner screen and the screen here as well is pretty gross so we'll wipe the dust off that and that is one really big dust piece right there look at that but looks like there's a few scratches in here and the board is nice and secured back on and let's just see how the screen looks now that we've dusted it yeah, that looks a lot nicer. There's a few scratches on the screen, but it's acceptable. So now we're ready to start hooking everything together. And like I said, we're using this Arduino here. We've got 24 pins here of inputs. That's 24 possible connections. And over here, I've made this little um, little chart explaining what each things do. This part here is all invalid at this point because uh, I've rewired it, but this kind of explains what each pin does. So next thing to do is hook all of those pins from this to this. Okay, so the wiring of the panel is complete. We have all of these big clusters of wires that go to our Arduino, it is now ready to start displaying numbers. Now we have two more issues that we need to solve with this project. First being, how are we gonna give some sort of input to the Arduino so we know what to display on the indicator? And second, we need to light up the back so we can actually see the number. So for the lighting, it's gonna be pretty simple. We've got these little bolts here, these little screws. We can build some sort of device that holds LEDs, put it on here and wire it up into our Arduino so they turn on when we power on the Arduino. So as for the input system, I came up with something that I thought would be a little more interesting and that was to use a keypad instead of my remote control. Therefore, we can punch in a number on the keypad and then it goes to it. But that brought me to another problem and that was there's not enough inputs on the Arduino to handle a keypad. We are just going to use an IR receiver, just like my other project that require multiple inputs. We'll mount this guy up here on the top, as small as we can, we don't want to see him that much, but we'll mount him up here, so we'll probably have to 3D print a little, little holder, and then we will simply hook it up to the Arduino, and then from there it's all just a programming game. So I just have to program this thing to take input from our remote control, convert it into a number that the Arduino can read, and what we do with that number is really up to us. We can make it simulate going to that floor. We could directly display that floor. We could do all kinds of fun things with it. So I'm gonna first focus on attaching this IR receiver up here. So we'll need to 3D print a part and then wire it into here. All right, and here we have the little piece for the IR receiver. And you can see here, it fits in here perfectly. You just gotta take this little base off and the piece will be ready to go. So all I have to do is just attach this where I want it. We're gonna place the receiver in there and get it all wired up to the Arduino.
right, so there is my little attached IR receiver right here on the top. And here we have the wires, which go to the respective ports on the Arduino. So at this point, I'd like to do some software stuff. So I want to go ahead and do some coding for this guy. And then we'll focus on getting a lamp or light back here to light up the display. Okay, so the programming is complete, and we can see here that the indicator now displays an L for the lobby. So the way I've set up the program is you can use the remote control to input a floor and then have it simulate going there. So we're at the lobby right now, which means we're at floor one. So let's say we wanna to go to floor five. So we hit five. Now you'll notice that the little down arrow flashed, and what that means is that the Arduino has received the floor input, and then you can hit the play button and you'll see it goes up to five. Basically all that little flash means, so if I hit a value, see right now it doesn't take it, but every time I hit a button, it flashes. Now I hit one a bunch of times, so it's not gonna do anything. So hitting C flashes twice, which means the entry was cleared. Now if I hit one go, it goes down to one. So let's tell it to go to 99. So let's hit 99, so you see it flashes twice, and now we hit the play button, and now it's going to go up to 99. So as for lighting this thing up, I've got these two pre-wired yellow LEDs. And you can see here they have their little resistor already on them. And what I was thinking we could do, we could simply set these up kind of inside of this little bracket here. So we could put it, kind of wrap it around these little bolts, and then we could put a little nut on top of them to hold them in place. So we could put one on either side and then adjust it to the way we want. And then we can just connect these wires to the five volt and ground so that they just turn on when the Arduino is powered on. All right, so I've put the two little LEDs behind it. So we theoretically can have one shining over this way and one this way, so it'll fill in nice and evenly. So I guess the next thing now is to give it a test. So I'm going to go ahead and add this battery. Let's see if it comes on. So we don't know for sure if that's the LEDs, so let's turn off the light. Yep, look at that. We've got our LEDs back here, which are lighting up the plates. So I'm just gonna adjust them to how I want them. And now if you look at that, we've got an orange display. One more thing we need to add before we can be done with this project, we're gonna add a switch. All right, my switch has been added down here. And you can see when I turn it on, these lights come on and the Arduino comes on and is ready to go. So I guess that means this project is finally done. All right, you can see here the indicator is now back in the shelf with the elevator parts and we can just reach on around the side to turn it on. You see it lights up the wall a little bit in the back, but that's okay. But we've got our floor, so let's see here. Let's take it up to floor 45 and up we go. You can see the indicator is moving up just like a regular elevator would, except it's moving at, you know, really fast speeds, but seeing as you can go all the way to 100, kind of wants to go pretty quick. Here we are at 45, and we'll take it down to one. So, one, and down it goes. And there it is at, well, one or the lobby. So I'm really happy with the way this came out, and you can see here, it does take the remote from pretty far away. I can, uh, you can see it's actually taking an input, but it's not actually getting anything. That's one thing I've noticed with this remote is it just, sometimes it, the values that it receives are kind of garbage. Takes it a few tries, but other than that, it's pretty good. And then once you're finished, just reach around the side and turn it off, and we're good to go. And what's cool about this remote control is it can be used for other projects that have the same kind of remote input. You can use these to make it go to that floor as well. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little project video of this really cool indicator. This was definitely a lot of fun to make, and I'm really happy that I finally got it going. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys next time.